Hey, I'm Evan. I'm Paul. And we're members of the Gulf Coast Spirit Society, and today we're going to be trying Old Forester 1910. Give us a story on this, man. So, the Whiskey Row series uh, that started with 1870, it was the, um, the founding of the company. They started in 1870, and they were famous for being the first bottled bourbon, where... Uh, you know these bourbon producers were they were selling it by the barrel and then you know once it would go out to the public it would be cut and all kinds of additives and things so he wanted to have control over his uh, products by bottling it and then that way it couldn't be uh, you knew what you were getting in the bottle yeah unaltered yeah so that's so that's what the 1870 bottle represented. Then the 1897 bottle was a bottle and bond. Mm -hmm. 1920 was the uh, prohibition, and then now the uh, the 1910, uh, they are going back a little bit uh, and uh, doing old fine whiskey, which was kind of an accidental experiment that they had to do because of a fire on a bottling line that. They had the batch of barrels ready to go, and uh, because of the fire on the bottling line, they couldn't bottle it, so they had to throw it back into barrels to wait until they got the bottling line oh, okay. open. So it was the first uh, documented case of double barreling. Apparently, this was going to come out before the 1920, but then Brown Foreman execs decided to, uh, they wanted to go with the pre-prohibition one first, so... But yeah, I'm, I've been I've been waiting for this for a yeah. while because I, I I like all of the the whiskey row series, uh, especially the 1920. That is one of my favorite bottles that's out right now. That's readily available. Anyways, yeah, that's one of my favorites too, for sure. Um, I mean, a real powerhouse bourbon, good flavors all around. It's hard to beat, especially. I mean, it's I think it's a a bargain for what you're getting. Uh, so let's see if this one stacks up. Yeah, I know the uh, um, the nineteen twenty. I I actually prefer it over the birthday bourbon. I know I've you know I had a few people disagree with me. I know Joe disagrees with me. He likes the birthday bourbon better, but I've done it side by side uh, a couple times with. Uh, the, uh, the birthday bourbon, and I just prefer it. I think it holds its own with the birthday bourbon, for sure, and especially it's on the shelf. Exactly. It's half the price. Mm. It, it's pretty hard to beat, and, you know, you can get it whenever you want, pretty much. But the word's getting out, so. And I'm hoping this is something that's going to stay in their lineup as part of their core range, but that's, you never know. Whenever we talk to Chris Morris, I mean, he I specifically asked him more so about the 1920 than the whole Whiskey Row series, yeah. but he said they plan on... The Whiskey Row series being a part of their core lineup and on shelves for a long time. So. Yeah, the color on this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's darker than the 1920. Yeah, they say that second barrel. Yeah, because the first barrel this goes into is heavily toasted, lightly charred. Okay. And then the second barrel it goes into is heavily charred. They say yeah. to the point of almost like being incinerated. Yeah. And I'm sure that's where that that. Color I remember him comes saying from. something like that. Like they went as far as they could before it would fall apart. Yeah. Well, and it um, it goes in, they said it goes into the second barrel at 100 proof because they said that's what it would have been going into. They were trying to replicate mm -hmm. the original batch as much as possible. So they said it would have gone into that second barrel at 100 proof because that's what they would have had it ready to bottle at was 100 proof. And so, yeah, that's what. So, so. well, let's see what it's got, man. Yeah, right off the bat, I'm getting like, just like really, I get like a dark cherry, like burnt, like I, I, I get the char right off the bat. Yeah. But I get really dark fruits, but but like dark ripe fruits, mm. not like prunes or those yeah, like no, dried I, fruits. Yeah, no, I definitely agree yeah. with you on the, the cherries thing, like a, yeah, like a cherry pie but yeah you're right like kind of like it's a almost a little overcooked kinda. exactly yeah it's uh wow the the nose is unlike anything else brown foreman makes it is uh yeah i agree i mean then the color and i'm looking at it right here and it's like 
it looks burnt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just so, you know, it's not like red or anything like that. Those notes, it's like yeah, and chocolate it's, brown. Yeah, it's not a sweet note. Yeah. It's but it is very interesting. I uh, yeah. it's I can nose this all day, but it's mainly because it's so different from anything else. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I get it's it's tons of char. Yeah. Dark it, red fruits. Like burnt caramel or like burnt sugar, like I think you said it earlier. Yeah, like uh, the the caramelized sugar on top of a creme yeah, brulee, that yeah. kind of yeah, that's that's a lot that of sounds so pretentious. But well, no, no, that's yeah, what it, just, it yeah, it, it's it's very a lot of the flavors kind of uh, revolve around the char. Yeah. You know. Which, anyways, I'm gonna, I'm going in. Hmm. 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 Wow, <laughs> that's that delicious. Is... <laughs> man, that's so, that's so different and interesting. But man, that um. Oh man, that is really. Wow, the finish. That that's really. Yeah. Making me salivate. There's mm -hmm. lots. Wow. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of like like the really high percentage uh, dark chocolate, like that really high cocoa dark chocolate, yeah. 80%, something like that. Mm. Like not quite bitter, but not sweet, definitely. But but heavily, uh, heavy cocoa. Mm. I still get some of those fruits. And I get a little bit of vanilla on the... Um on the finish yeah i agree um yeah with that fruits i think you're right about the the dried cherry i uh, get it but it's it's all of the all of the sweeter flavors mm -hmm. are on the the back end of the finish you definitely get more of the, the Man, darker notes i gotta say that gives 1920 a run for its money for sure mm. wow yeah i'm I get, really impressed man yeah i get some on um, yeah, you know it's funny. Um, as it as it's gone, I've I've liked them more because mm -hmm. I definitely liked the bottle mm -hmm. and bond better than the eighteen seventy, and then the nineteen twenty just hit it out of the park. And now I don't know if I'd go as far to say that I like this better than the nineteen twenty. I'll I'll kind of wait because this is extremely interesting whiskey. This is something I'm definitely probably going to be drinking through because it's going to be something i'm want to yeah it's i, I guarantee delicious, i'll man. i'll be kind of looking man what do i want to pour tonight mm, let me let me hit that again I, yeah. I bet i go through a half a bottle pretty quick i can definitely see this being a bit more polarizing than the 1920 oh for sure uh, just I think... because of the 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 darker flavors and the yeah the, but yeah, I think this is going to be a, more of the love it, hate it, I would say, that this is geared to somebody that likes heavy char, that, that likes that real, you know, dark fruit, heavily charred barrel. I know whenever you're kind of newer to bourbon, you tend to gravitate towards sweeter yeah. bourbons. Um, I mean, we all, I, that, I think that's the evolution of every single bourbon drinker. You start out with, with sweeter bourbons almost exclusively yeah. and then branch out and so this is if you prefer sweeter bourbons this you might want to hold off on this one yeah but on the other hand man if you want to expand your palate i would this true. is something that well, i would I'm highly recommend advocate for that yeah. yeah and this is one that i would highly recommend it's like yeah. maybe even just go through the whole whiskey roll lineup and kind of work your way up yeah. and, and i'm kind of starting to think that maybe they did the right thing by introducing this after the 1920 because of how unique it is you know the the 1920s just like a like a really good version of a standard bourbon and this is totally different i mean, I mean I'm, I'm gonna pour a little bit more mm. because i'm really enjoying it mm. a lot of times i see with younger bourbons that they try to double barrel to kind of get yeah. kind of speed up the process mm -hmm. they, they they turn out just kind of um 
a little coarse. And so this kind of tells me that they they started out with a good bourbon that was probably already aged, that it was probably good enough to release on its own. Yeah, like you said, the the double barreling is not hiding a younger whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, it is it has a ton of character. It's it, I'm really curious how long it spins in that second barrel. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. so much of that dark char note to it mm -hmm. especially since he said the first barrel is lightly charred said yeah. heavily toasted lightly charred and then into lightly toasted heavily, heavily charred. charred i mean that was a great event that we were able to go to as a proxy of uh, longhorn mm -hmm. and uh it was uh it was so fascinating to be able to get more of the detailed story behind this and yeah. you know and details on the 1920 and stuff mm -hmm. like that it was uh Real interesting, but yeah, this uh, out of new new whiskeys mm -hmm. that have come out this year, uh, this is definitely near or at I, the top for me. I would prob I would have to agree with you. Out of just new core lineup stuff, this is probably the best one I've had this year. I guarantee I'm going to revisit this a lot. Yeah, I need to, I need some time with this to mm -hmm. really get some really good tasty notes. I mean, we threw some out there. But those are mostly like just initial initial impression, yeah. yeah. Oh. And and initial, it just yeah. Man, I poured a second pour and I wow. I went through it like nothing because it was just so tasty. Yeah, that kind of first breath after the finish kind of brings it all rushing back. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yeah, there's sweet flavors there. It's not all dark flavors, no. but um, but the sweetness is like kind of muted. It's. It's like semi-sweet, like, yeah. like you would get with like yeah. a semi-sweet chocolate chip or something. Mm. But I get, yeah, I get a lot of like dark chocolate influence. I get dark cherries and those types of, of fruits. Um, heavy char. Uh, just a lot of flavors I really like, so. Yeah, because you know, a, um, man. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to talk. Um. If you like really over toasted a marshmallow, you might get some of these flavors. It's just like everything overly toasted, but in a the best possible way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I can imagine how that would sound like that. Yeah. It's uh, like man, this just tastes like burnt. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, but it but does, it's, but in it's, the best way possible. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's not a, it's not a detractor. It's it is, it it's. Everything that you've ever had, like, burnt that was good. Yeah. All right, man. So, Old Forester 1910. Impressive. <laughs>